I'm sure it's someone else. Someone's gonna be like, "This is all." Ty's been operating the whole time. No, I'm not blaming someone else. It's like someone gave big into this because they didn't want to make it. He's like, "Bro, this is all I got." And Mel's like, "Thanks for nothing." Nine o'clock. It's literally like thirty five now. Testing one, two. Hello. Good morning. Hi. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to worship. A little, a little, a little crazy here. Uh, I'd ask that you just come on in and take a seat anywhere where you're comfortable because uh, we are at that point where we are going to start worship. And we can't do that without you. So at this point, let's put our listening ears on and uh, listen for our opening prayer, wherever that may come from. this morning, which comes to us adapted from the poem, The Hill We Climb, by Amanda Gorman. When day comes, O oh God, we ask, where can we find light in this never-ending shade? You know the losses we carry. You understand the sea we must wade. We brave the belly of the beast. We learn that quiet isn't always peace. And the norms and notions of what just is, is not always justice. Yet you call forth the dawn and it is ours before we know it. Somehow we do it. We follow your call. We speak with your voice, creating a community committed to all cultures, colors, characters, and conditions of humankind. We lift our gaze to you, Holy One, seeing not what stands between us, but what stands before us. Help us to ever close the divide, to put our future first and put our differences aside. We lay down our armaments so that we might reach out our arms to one another and to you. We seek to harm none and harmony for all. Let us, your people, if nothing else, say that this is so that even as we grieve, we grow, even as we hurt, we hope. And when day comes, may we step out of the shade aflame and unafraid, for there is always light, if only we have, if only you give us courage to see it, and if only you give us courage to be it. Amen. If you would please stand and sing, we're going to sing Shout to the Lord. So. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I long to praise the wonders of your mighty My comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength. Let every breath, all that I am, and never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord on the earth, let us sing. The power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar. At the sound of your name, I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. Shout to the Lord on the earth, let us sing. The power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have. Nothing compares to the promise I have. Nothing compares to the promise I have.
Good morning and welcome. You may be seated. My name is Reverend Melanie Marshbaum, and I am the senior pastor here at Community Presbyterian Church. And each week as we gather together, we say that whether this is your very first time visiting with us, whether you are back after a long time away, or whether you have been here every single Sunday from the beginning, our worship today is different and special because you are here, and we could not do this without you. We gather each and every week in joy and praise to God for this wonderful community that God has given us, and we gather to worship God in lots of different ways. And one of the ways that we know we are given to worship God is through our creativity. And so today's worship service is all about harnessing those creative gifts, or perhaps discovering creative gifts that we didn't even know that we had yet. Right now, this summer, we are in the midst of a worship series on the prophets, and one of the things that we know is true about the prophets is that they used lots of imaginative and creative language. Today's worship service is focused all about the language of the prophets and its poetic and imaginative nature. And so as we go through our worship service today as we listen to the scriptures read and the reflections that are given to us for those scriptures, you will have an opportunity to respond with your own kind of creativity. After each reflection this morning, there will be a musical response, and during the musical response, and even as people are reading and reflecting, you are welcome to use any of the creative supplies you see around the room to make your own creative writing, doodling, coloring, molding, anything that the spirit moves within you. And at the end of the service, we will have an opportunity to share our creative gifts and offerings with one another and with God by bringing them to the offering table. So I hope that you will allow the spirit of God's creativity to settle within you and to help you express in whatever way you see fit. Also this week, we remember that next week, is the 4th of July already. Can't believe it. And we'll be celebrating communion, but because it is a holiday weekend, we are celebrating communion with one service next week in the sanctuary. So we hope that you will join us for worship next weekend as part of your holiday celebrations. And just remember that we will be together in the sanctuary at 10 a.m. for worship next week. As we gather for worship today, We remember all the ways that God is merciful and gracious to us in all things. And we remember that sometimes we live up to those great expectations of God, and sometimes we don't quite measure up. But when we stop trying to be what other people want us to be, we find that we can focus on what God wants us to be, and our life becomes a little simpler. So let us move from being ruled by the multitudes around us to being ruled by the Holy One as we confess together all that separates us from God's guiding presence. Let us pray together. Not from gleaming heights of piety, but darkest deeps we cry to you, O God. We bring you the gift of our tears, the openness of our excuseless hands, We offer to you the treasure of our confession, the intricate art of our broken places. If you judged, we would fail, but you only bless and forgive. We wait, we sit in this darkness, longing for your dawning within us, longing for the dawning that is surely coming that has already begun in our East, and we watch. Hear us as we pray now our silent confessions of sin. Beloved, second chance moments are a gift from God. What we do with these moments are our gift to God. And each new day presents an opportunity to start over, to grow up, to join God on the journey. 
Beloved, believe this good news. In Christ, we are all forgiven. As beloved children of God, redeemed and reconciled through Christ, we greet one another in worship with a sign of Christ's peace. If you are worshiping with us online, you may share a sign of Christ's peace by offering a comment or an emoji on the video. And if you are worshiping with us in person, I invite you to stand and greet one another with any sign of Christ's peace that you wish from your spot. The peace of Christ be with you all. As we are finding our way back to our seats, we remember that this is the fourth Sunday of the month, and it is when we collect and celebrate our food on the fourth offering for our mission committee. So if you have any uh, food cans or non-perishable items, snacks to offer for our um, collection for kids this week, I invite you to either bring them to the front, or we might be able to find a volunteer who can bring our wagon around. Maybe Jane, Jane, do it. Yes, thank you, Jane. It's right here in front. And if you just want to make like one circle down, go down the aisle and come back, maybe people will hand you their stuff if they have any. If they don't, that's okay. We are grateful always for our community's generosity. <laughs> and and faithfulness, not only to the people who are members at this church, but to the community all around us. And I invite Melissa up now to share our offering meditation. As most of you are aware, we held our annual summer vacation Bible school this week. Our theme was Knights of the North Castle. We were blessed with over 50 children and 35 volunteers for a week of learning, laughter, and fun. And Sparky, who became our friend. <laughs> One of the areas of rotation this year that we focused on was missions. The children discussed the differences between wants and needs. And they made a life-size dragon on the wall that represented the the needs of our community. So we had the dragon of needs in the mission area. The children then spent the week learning ways to slay the dragon of need by becoming God's love in action. Our brave knights of the North Castle slayed the dragon of hunger by donating food to Beam and Family Promise. They slayed the dragon of homelessness by donating toys for Family Promise bagging shoes, and making cards for our father's housewares. They slay the dragon of loneliness by making special messages for our friends at Pablo Towers. Our Knights of the North Castle became the hands and feet of Jesus on earth and learned that even though they may be small, they are mighty with God's help. They can truly make a difference in the world. A couple of quick reminders about our missions in general. We are going to be hosting Family Promise starting on 4th of July. There is still room on the sign-up, especially with slumber hosts, to help with this ministry. And there will be, after the service or between the services, there will be a sign-up um, outside where you can pick up uh, sticky notes for things that they still need donated. And also be on the lookout for information for our next Blue Bin ministry, which will start in July. We are thankful for all the ways that you serve our community and church with your time, talent, and treasures. Your generosity is always overwhelming. Now let us go to God in prayer with a prayer written by John Vanderlaar, illustrating how we can be God's love in action as our Knights of the North Castle learned this week. Let us pray. Your love, O oh God, is an active love, engaged, involved, immersed. Your love, O oh God, is seen in what you do, not just in what you say, in the blessing of children, in the meals with the outcasts, in the touching of the untouchables, in your presence and your self-giving, 
in your opening of the way to life to all who will come. And your love, O oh God, ex is expressed through people like us as we share our wealth in simplicity and generosity, as we share wholeness in care and healing of the sick and broken, as we share hospitality by being truly present to the lonely, the imprisoned, and the marginalized, as we share peace and kindness, listening and acceptance with those who challenge us, confront us, and threaten us. As you have loved us in incarnate action, O oh God, may we learn to be little incarnations through whom your love is expressed and experienced in action. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So as we will hear in one of our reflection readings this morning from Corinthians, 
we recognize that God offers and gifts us with many types of gifts. The whole community has different things that they are strong at and different things that they bring to the table. And so today, as I mentioned in our welcome, we are practicing worshiping God with our whole lives and with our whole set of gifts. And we are working on making that also include our creative gifts, those that we've already discovered and those that maybe we have not yet discovered. And so as we prepare to hear our first reading this morning, I want to invite you all, no matter what age or skill level of craftiness you might be at, to take a moment to peruse our resources and see if there's anything that you want to grab to participate in worship with today. If you've already done so, feel free to just use what you have. But now is your moment if you'd like to uh, take some resources back to your table or back to your chair. You are free to stand and do so. And as you are finding your things and returning to your seat, I invite you as we enter into this time of reading and reflections to listen carefully to the words that are spoken, the words that are read aloud from the scriptures, and to allow them to resonate deeply within you. We invite God's spirit of creativity into this place and time of worship, and any words that stand out to you, any imagery that captures your heart and your mind, feel free to respond in any way that you see fit. Writing a prayer, silently reciting a prayer or creating one in your mind, drawing, molding with clay, coloring, anything that comes out of your creative expression is holy and sacred and wonderful to God. So let us now listen to the words of our first reading, which comes to us from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 11, verses 6, 7, and 9. The wolf shall live with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the lion and the fatling together and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall both graze, and their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Here ends our first reading. So we've come to think of prophets as rather judgmental and cranky, scolding us for our inattention or our lack of conscience and compassion. But what we have also learned in these early weeks is that this scolding posture is rooted in their deep and abiding love of people love for those who are vulnerable and persecuted, and love for those who are privileged and persecutors. It is often said that God loves us deeply, just the way that we are, and loves us 
far too much to let us stay that way. And sometimes we need a little help seeing our world and our ways for what they truly are. We need a little help imagining how things could be different. This is the moment where the prophet shines. Jewish scholar Abraham Heschel, who we spoke about a couple of weeks ago, who wrote the definitive study on the prophets, reminds us that the prophets' essential gifts are those of creativity and imagination. The prophet, Heschel writes, is a poet. What the poets know as creative inspiration, Heschel says, is known what the poets know as creative inspiration, the prophets call divine revelation. This inspiration of the artist is what is meant when we hear in the scriptures of the hand of the Lord resting upon the prophet. What makes the difference between the prophet and the ordinary person is possession of a heightened and unified awareness of the particular aspects of life. They can take something as mundane and ordinary as a beggar on the street and elevate them to a level of holiness and reverence, forcing us all to pay attention to their plight. Like a poet, prophets are endowed with sensibility, with enthusiasm, and with tenderness. And above all, they are endowed with imaginative thinking. Poetic language gives the prophet a kind of visionary superpower. They help the people imagine what was, until now, unimaginable. Because in poetry, everything is possible. Trees will clap their hands. The lion will lay down with the lamb. God will speak through women and through men, through slaves and through children. Poetic language disarms us. It extends our vision beyond the horizon and gives us a brand new way of seeing. As with the language from the poet, former poet laureate of the United States, Maya Angelou, who wrote in her 1995 poem, Touched by an Angel, these words. We accustomed to courage, exiles from delight, live coiled in shells of loneliness until love leaves its high holy temple and comes into our sight to liberate us into life. Love arrives, and in its train come ecstasies, old memories of pleasure, ancient histories of pain. If we are bold, love strikes away the chains of fear from our souls. We are weaned from our timidity in the flush of love's light. We dare be brave, and suddenly we see that love costs all that we are and will ever be. Yet it is only love which sets us free. give you all a few words about uh, the next song we're going to be singing, Let There Be Peace on Earth. Um, as I listen to the words of Melanie's poem uh, about love and bringing things together, and uh, brought me back to reading of uh, what the two writers wrote. Uh, Jill Jackson wrote our, uh, an interview in 1944. Um, mentioned that she was prepared to take her own life and through uh, the intervention of God w that she was touched and knew that she had a greater purpose to live on in life. Years later, her husband uh, wrote the popular tune that we all know today for Let There Be Peace on Earth. And at a retreat in California, uh, those of different races, creeds, religions, all came together and sang that song of let there be peace on earth to bring peace and unity 
to everyone. So I invite you all, whether you're the lion or the lamb, to stand, join us this morning in singing through Let There Be Peace on Earth twice through. First time the band will sing and the second time we invite you to join us with join with us. pray. God of love, God of peace, God of the lion and the lamb and the children and the elders, live in us today that we might embody your peace and compassion for this world, that we might turn around the places that need turning to you, that we might break down the barriers between ourselves and others, between ourselves and your presence, until all may know and be part of your beloved community. Through you, through us, through all things connected by your spirit. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Sorry about that. Our next scripture reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 11. Listen for the word of the Lord. 
Now, there are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are a variety of services, but the same Lord. And there are a variety of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healings by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the discernment of spirits. And to another, various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of those tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. I have to admit that I was a little bit challenged when I was trying to come up with a, a scripture that would tie in Vacation Bible School and Prophecy, <laughs> but I thought that was a good one. Um, we were back in session this week after two years. You know, we had the pandemic year off, and I just have to say how fabulous Vacation Bible School was this week. We spent a week on a quest to become Knights of the North Castle. Armoring up, uh, armoring up each day with truth, justice, peace, faith, and salvation. Crafts were made. Science was performed. Cardboard box goliaths were pelted with balls in our recreation area. And we worked in missions each day to slay the dragon of need. And trust me, this could not be done without the spirit that was working with us on a daily basis. As our scripture says, there are a variety of gifts, but the same spirit, a variety of services, but the same Lord, a variety of activities, but it is the same God who activates them in each one of us. Singing, acting, organizing, teaching, serving, crafting, friendship, and questionable joke telling we're all on display. And while none of us could have done it by ourselves, we were able to come together about a hundred strong, led and joined by the Spirit to make each activity, service, and gift work together to glorify God. No one thing was more important than another, and we freely shared everything. And if you use the definition of a prophet, as someone who is inspired to share the Spirit of God, I am confident that all of our Knights of the North Castle moved towards that this week. And hopefully we have some technological magic right now.
a prayer of reflection on 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 11, which was inspired by a prayer by Anne Osetic. Let us pray. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit. Were the crafts created by the knights of the North Castle meant for their eyes alone? Were the jokes that Sparky the Dragon shared only meant for him? Were the science experiments more important than the games we played? Was it better for us to slay the dragon of loneliness or the dragon of homelessness? There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit. And we ask again, are the discerners of spirit better than those who prophesy? Is it better to be a healer than a preacher? Was Mother Teresa more important than the Jesuit brother who held the door? There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit. All gifts are from the same spirit. They are each a part of the whole and given to us for each other and for the common good. Lord, help us understand and show you gratitude for all the gifts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. reading this morning comes to us again from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. The word that Isaiah, son of Amoz, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many peoples shall come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many people. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. And also from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 35, verses 3 and 4, strengthen the weak hands and make firm, feeble knees. Say to those who are of fearful heart, be strong and do not fear. Here is your God, the Holy One, is coming with unassailable justice. This is the third reading. So it may come as a surprise, or it may not, that both of these writings and many of the writings within the books of Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, came at a time in the history of the Hebrew people when they had been through generations of almost unending warfare. And these images of peace coming out of weapons of destruction, healing coming out of times of chaos and war, were the message of hope the prophet wanted to offer to the people during their time of trial. And it wasn't just some nebulous, far off hope that maybe one day God would arrive and rescue them. No, the hope was to come from within the people themselves. You and me, each one of us, are instruments of God's healing and messengers of God's hope. Pastor and poet, and I might also add prophet, 
Reverend Steve Garnett Holmes, who is one of my favorite Methodist poets in the world, has this to say about the prophet Isaiah and his word of hope. Isaiah promises a world in which sorrow and sighing will flee away. For those who know grief or despair, who suffer oppression or abuse, who face injustice or violence, dare they hope for such a day? And if they do, what could give them that hope? Maybe it will be you. You be the one. God has sent you, has sent me, has sent us, a messenger to prepare the way. Every choice we make, we ask ourselves, does this give hope to the poor or make life better for the powerless? Live your life in such a way that each moment is an act of encouragement for the powerless, for the outcast, for those who wait. In all you do, be a light in the darkness. God's grace is in you to do this. Amen. As we listen to the musical response this time after the reflection, I invite you to share any creative offerings that you have worked on together during this time by walking them forward and placing them on the altar, on the communion table. We will share, and if you're worshiping, worshiping with us online, we invite you to share a picture or a description of what you've created in the comment section now or after worship. Thank you for all that you give to this community. We have one more song for you this morning, and I think you can help us out. So I'm going to say some. We need you, definitely need your help, Dave. All right. So the words go like this: Come, let us go up to Zion. Let us draw near to the Lord our God. Come, let us go to Zion. Let us draw near to the presence of the Lord. Do you think they're good? Yeah, I'll let it. Do you think they're good? Okay. We're going to sing it for you. The words are going to be up on the screen. I invite you to stand and get into this as much as possible. <laughs>
We give thanks to God for all of the ways in which God has blessed us with creative energy and spirits. And we remember that not only has God blessed us with creativity, but God has also blessed us with care and compassion. And so we join together each week in worship in praying with and for one another in our community, both within our congregation and beyond. And so I would like to highlight just a few of the needs and people that we are praying for this week for you today before we pray, and then let you know that if you would like a full list of all of those people who are on our current prayer list, you can get a hard copy here in the foyer of the fellowship hall or in the narthex of the sanctuary, and you can sign up for an email version with us in the office. This week we are praying with Stuart, who is suffering from dementia, and his family, who is caregiving. We are offering thanksgiving for prayers answered, those spoken aloud, and those kept within our hearts. We are praying for David, who lost his mother unexpectedly, for the victims and families and caregivers and rescue people who are working through the condo collapse in South Florida, for Virginia, who is having breast cancer surgery, and, or who maybe recently had it and is thanking God for a full and swift recovery. For Barry, who had a recent relapse with cancer. For those in Surfside who are processing the great loss and this building collapse. For Marie and Sarah and Suzanne, prayers of comfort for caregivers in the midst of illness and death. There are so many things on our hearts and our minds as we come together each week. And there are so many names and needs that are not known to us, but are always remembered in the heart of God. So let us now go together in prayer for all of those who need it. God of compassion and grace, you look upon us, this multitude of humanity on the earth, with the eyes of a gentle and loving parent, seeing each one of us as unique and holy, beloved and blessed, when we deserve it and when we do not. We give you thanks for your deep compassion. Pour out your love and healing on our world, O oh God. Those who are suffering from tragedy, those who are rebuilding, after the chaos of war, those who are feeling isolated and lonely as they navigate the waters of illness, the waters of anxiety, the waters of depression. Give us each what we need to make it through this day and to make it into the future that you have set forth for us. Guide and lead our leaders in our country, our community, our neighborhood, and our world, that they might be led by your spirit of wisdom, your spirit that is imaginative and has a vision for a future where all people are given voice, are given freedom, are given dignity and hope. Help us to be the conduit for that vision here in this place. That your love might shine forth in us today. O oh, spirit of truth, 
we give you thanks for those saints and prophets who have listened for your word and spoken with their lives. We listen for your voice, whether your word be harsh or comforting. We ask that our whole lives be attuned to listening in every moment, in every way. Help us to discern when speaking is part of listening and when bad news may be part of your good news for the sake of the mending of the world. Give us courage to speak, to embody your truth without fear, to live so that our lives speak your justice. Hold us, your people, in your loving arms as we remember those who most desperately need your care today for the big and small struggles of life. Help us to trust, O oh God, that your word in us will not fall to the ground, but will accomplish what you sent it for, even if only that one other may hear it. Grant us to listen clearly, to trust the grace in your word, to embody your love in faith. We ask all these things in the name of your love made human, Christ our Redeemer, who lived among us and loved us, and taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Beloved, the words of our benediction today again come to us from the prophets in their poetic and wonderful way of saying the things that God wants them to say. We hear, you will indeed go out with joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills will burst into song before you, and all the trees of the fields shall clap their hands. Amen and amen. The service is ended. May we all go in peace.